Hey guys, it's Kay. Welcome back to my channel. And very few creatures on earth have the ability to capture our hearts and fill us with as much happiness as our cats and dogs. As of last year, in the United States alone, we have 94 million cats and 89 million dogs. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you some tips about how to keep your home looking clean and smelling fresh so that you and Rover can spend more time cuddling and less time trying to figure out what that smell is and where is it coming from. Having been both a dog parent and a cat parent in my life, I can definitely agree that there are some cleaning challenges that go along with being a cat parent, mostly having to do with the litter box. But last year I fulfilled my lifelong dream of having a dog. I got this little guy, this is Clover, this is my Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. He's about a year and a half. And I can say to you that there are definitely some cleaning challenges that go along with being a dog parent. Since he was four months old when we brought him home to live with us, we have been bo through both the puppy potty training stages of life and both the adult stage of life where he goes and plays in some super dirty, muddy places and can potentially bring all that dirt and mud into our home. I've definitely made some mistakes and learned some lessons from this year and a half, and I'm gonna share those tips with you now about how to keep your home very clean and fresh smelling when you have a puppy or, you know, a big dog, but they're all puppies to me, they are. So in my experience, it seems that dogs are responsible or can be responsible for three kinds of messiness in your home. So one is dog hair or dog fur. There are potential for dogs bringing dirt into your home from outside and the last is accidents. First, we're gonna talk about dog hair or dog fur. Dog hair can be a source of frustration for a lot of people, especially if your dog is shedding seasonally. I find that myself that he sheds a lot more hair at different times of the year than others. Biologically and chemically, there is no distinction between hair and fur. They virtually are interchangeable. There are different textures of hair and fur. Some hair is long, some hair is short, some is curly. There is an ongoing debate over the hypoallergenic quality of some curly-haired dogs. Uh, some scientists are claiming that that's not really a thing, um, and some people claim that the curly texture of the coat actually will trap some of the allergens that usually have to deal with the urine and saliva from the dog, but that's for another video. One thing is definitely true in that all dogs will shed their hair eventually. The frequency and the amount of the shedding definitely does depend on your individual dog and the texture of their hair and how long the hair growth life cycle is. So if dog hair is an issue for you in your home, there are a number of things you can do to make your life easier. The first thing you can do is set up a regular grooming regimen for you and your dog. This stops some of the shedding at the source, plus creates a great bonding experience for you and your dog. You can have a little cuddle time after you are grooming. When we got Clover, he was four months old and I started to groom him a lot as a puppy and incorporating treats into this little grooming session because I know some pets can get a little bit squirmy about that stuff, especially if there are tangles involved. But taking care of the grooming pretty much every day with him, it depends on the texture and coat of your dog, helps stop some of that shedding at the source because a lot of the hair will end up actually in the comb or the brush and not on the floor or all over my couch and bed, et cetera, et cetera. If you're really serious about grooming, you can use something like the Furminator, which can definitely grab some of that undercoat even and pull up a lot of that dead hair before it has an opportunity to land on your floor. The second thing you can do to keep the pet hair at bay is, I know this is not what you wanted to hear, but vacuum or sweep daily. I'm sorry, that is really the name of the game. If you really wanna keep the hair under control, you have to do it daily in order to keep on top of it, especially if your dog is a heavy shedder like mine. If your dog doesn't shed as much or doesn't shed seemingly at all, you don't have to do this. But uh, in my case, the dog is shedding pretty much every day and every day I definitely find many more dog hairs. I'm actually surprised that there's dog hair still on the dog. I recommend that you get a hefty duty vacuum to do this job if you invest in something like a Dyson Animal, which I have. It is designed to deal with pet hair and it lasts a really long time. It's in my opinion that you purchase a high quality item that is up for the job rather than purchasing a less expensive item that you might have to replace that isn't up for the job. With vacuums, I tend to wanna spend a little more money to do the job, especially when it comes to pet hair. 
get the best one that you can afford to do the job. If it's in your budget, I do recommend very highly that you invest in a robot vacuum. We recently got a Roomba 890, I believe it is, and it is specially designed to deal with pet hair, and I simply will press a button and run that vacuum, and it will go around and pick up the pet hair and dust for me while I do something else. And it's been a lifesaver. Every pet owner that I have talked to about the Roomba has loved their Roomba and has not regretted the decision. So if definitely if it's in your budget, I say go ahead and pick one up. The Roomba 890 is a little bit more pricey at $500, but there are some other companies now besides iRobot that make robot vacuums. I don't personally have any experience with them, but I will link a few of those down below so that you can check them out. If the hair isn't that bad, you just may simply need to go dust with a dust mop just to pick a little bit of that hair up. I have this Casabella dust mop with a removable microfiber head. It works on the principle that there's a static electric charge with the mop head and it attracts dust and hair onto it and is easily washable in the washing machine. Keep in mind that you shouldn't wash microfiber with other fabrics. I have a whole video on microfiber, what it is and how to care for it. In another video, I will link it up above. I have this mesh wash bag for my microfiber cloths that stops the micro plastics from going into the oceans and rivers. Please see that video if you have microfiber in your home and you wanna take care of it properly. I promise you will not regret it. Lastly, with dealing with hair, if you are like me and let your pet on the furniture, you might want to invest in a few pet blankets specifically designated for your pet to sit on. It'll put a barrier between your pet and the couch that you won't have to clean there as often. You don't have to purchase one that's specifically for dogs, but you wanna make sure that it's machine washable. Next, let's talk about dirt. If your dog is living their best life, they're probably out running around in the dirt at the park, they're getting grass stains, they're going out in the mud and the rain, and they're bringing dirt from the outside inside. So specifically, if you don't have something like a mud room to be a barrier between the outside and the rest of your home, you wanna sort of stop the dirt from coming in your house. So I like to keep some dog wipes right at the doorway for me to just open the door, grab him, and I can wipe his dirty paws or anything else that's really yucky that he got into. I like these wall wipes, these lavender scented wipes. They smell really good. They're a little bit expensive for what they are, but they smell so good, I can't help but use them. Another great alternative for the wipes if you're not into the heavily scented wipes are these Burt's Bees wipes. They are really effective. They come in a small pack, so if you're out, you can go ahead and pop this in your purse or in your pocket. If you're a little rover, got really into it and has super dirty paws. This little paw washer has been really just really great. I got this around Christmas time. I haven't used it that much, but it has worked. It doesn't work as well as I'd like it to work, but it works well enough for me to tell you about it. It is like, a, it's a paw washer, and you fill it up with some water. You can even put some soapy water in there if you want with some little dog shampoo. And the dog puts their paw in there, and they just, you can just, you know, do that and it cleans their paw. So you can see the inside, of, there's some silicone little bristles there for to clean your dog's paws. Lastly, let's talk about dog shoes. When Clover was about five months old, I started to train him to wear dog shoes. Now, this is something best taught to your dog as a puppy, but it's I don't think it's ever too late to get your dog used to wearing shoes. If you live in a place, we live in an urban area in Boston where there is a lot of snow and the city will put salt on the sidewalks and there's a bunch of gross stuff on the sidewalks as well. Salt can be very irritating to dogs' paws. They can have cracking, they can get really painful sores. So I wanted to protect Clover's paws from all of that madness. There's a wax you can purchase called Musher's Secret. That works really well, but Clover's got really furry paws and the wax was only keeping his paw safe, but it wasn't keeping his little furry paw pads totally clean. So I invested in these boots from My Busy Dog. He's got two pairs. He's got an orange pair and a red pair. So he's always got a clean pair when, you know, ready to go. I do sort of clean these when they're not in use, but it keeps his paws safe from all the stuff on the sidewalks. It also keeps 
my house clean so that I take the boots off right as he comes in the apartment so that he's got a nice clean foot to step onto my floors. They stay on great because they've got double Velcro so they do not come off and he is not slowed down by them at all. Another side note is that boots and shoes are actually really good in hot weather as well. The asphalt on sidewalks and on streets can get up to temperatures that are way too hot for a dog paw. You should put your hand on the asphalt for a few seconds and if it's too hot for you, it's way too hot for your dog paw. So if you must take your dog on a walk when it's super hot and try some shoes, your dog will be much more comfortable and your paws will be protected. There are some other little dog shoes as well that I've used. I've used the paws one that's like little balloons for the feet. I find those work sort of okay. They're definitely much more difficult to get on. Sometimes it's a two person job. I don't recommend doing it all the time. They're really hard. They do work well and they're inexpensive, but they do wear out over time and I'll say it again, they're almost impossible to get on. The other thing I have used for quick trips are these RC Pets pet socks, they have little um, waterproof bottoms. So if we're needing to go out for a potty break on a really rainy day, I'll pop these on really fast and he can go out, do his business, and I can take them off right at the door and so his feet stay nice and clean and dry. Okay, let's talk about pet accidents and pet stains. If you have a puppy or you're bringing home a dog that is not potty trained, accidents will happen. It is part of the experience just, you know, be one with it, live inside it. One thing that I recommend that you definitely invest in and do some research about is getting an enzyme cleaner to clean up pet accidents. An enzyme cleaner, as opposed to any other cleaner, is going to act as a catalyst, since, since enzymes are catalysts, and break down some of that urine and feces smell so that the dog won't go back to the same spot and do the same thing again. Dog sense of smell is really incredible. So if you have not completely cleaned an accident area, they'll do a terminator and be like, I'll be back and return there and pee or poo again. The enzyme cleaner I like to use is Nature's Miracle. There are a bunch on the market that claim to work better than that. I found that Nature's Miracle works really well for me. I think that the, the trap that a lot of people fall into with enzyme cleaners is that they are not using them correctly and not cleaning the stain completely. When you're dealing with a liquid stain, such as your dog goes number one in the house or on the carpet, you wanna make sure that you get enough a lot of that moisture up initially right away. So grab a paper towel, blot it up as much as you can. Don't go spreading it around in the carpet, just blot it up. Try to absorb a lot of that moisture and then throw it away, but don't throw it away in your home. Throw it away outside of your home if you can because that smell, again, you wanna make sure that you remove the smell from your house completely so that your dog does not associate inside with the urine smell so that your dog won't go inside again. After you've blotted up the liquid, you wanna be very generous with your enzyme cleaner. I mean, just really, just go ham. Just go crazy with the enzyme cleaner, get it completely soaked. And you wanna leave it there a while. Don't just automatically try and clean it up. Leave it there, it's going to do its job. It's gonna break down some of that urine and feces or whatever is on there and it's going to neutralize the odor. In order for enzyme cleaners to work correctly, they have to have moisture, sometimes a little bit of heat too, and they have to have time. So some people even recommend putting a little plastic on top of where you put the enzyme cleaner so that it has time to work correctly. Keep in mind that the enzyme cleaner is there to break down the odor and clean, but not necessarily disinfect. So if you wanna disinfect, that's an entirely separate step. The last thing I wanna to touch on is you should very carefully consider the substances that you are using to clean your home when you have pets. Your pets are going to be much closer to the surfaces you're cleaning, like the floor, the counters, the carpets, than you are. When picking cleaning products, you wanna choose the least toxic ingredients you can get, as opposed to what is the most natural, because a lot of natural things can actually be quite toxic to cats and dogs. In my experience, things like baking soda, vinegar, and lemon have been pretty non-toxic. I have the mop going back there. I can't even tell if you can tell. I have a robot mop that is cleaning the floor. It is from iRobot. It comes in at about $2.99 and it's a great lifesaver, especially in winter time when Clover is bringing in some salty footprints if I haven't put boots on him. But it is just using water to clean and I find that that does just as good of a job as a, you know, a hefty cleaner. 
Baking soda is also fairly non-toxic, provided they don't ingest it in large amounts. I just sprinkle this over the carpet and it absorbs odors and it's super inexpensive. I think you can get a box at Target for like $1.50, it's amazing. And just be very careful with essential oils. I know essential oils are a huge thing right now, um, but there are definitely some essential oils that are more toxic to dogs. Actually, I think cats are are very, very sensitive to essential oils, but dogs are also sensitive to certain essential oils, especially some hot, hot essential oils. Just consult your veterinarian about what your lifestyle is and what you're doing with essential oils, and they'll be able to better tell you to either stop what you're doing or that what you're doing is okay. Okay, you guys, that's it for today's video. Did you guys learn anything new? I hope that you did. If you guys have any other tips about how to keep your house clean when you have your little canine furry friend living with you, please leave a comment down below I'd love to hear those tips. If you like videos like this, please subscribe. And if you like this video, just give it a big thumbs up and share it with somebody who you think would get a kick out of it as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.